hello everyone. Uh, uh, thank you for, for having me. Uh, here I am uh, from Los Angeles, California, and um, a great pleasure to be here and for the opportunity. A little background about me, um, I, I do have a bachelor's degree in marketing and business administration from Columbia College and an album degree from Harvard uh, in sustainability and environmental management. And I also worked in volunteer for the Department of Defense for more than 10 years in some NGOs and military uh, nonprofit organizations around the world. And uh, with the DOD, I went to the Middle East and had no in helping our troops as well. I got T-Mobile US and uh, Deutsche Telekom in Europe. Yeah. Sure. Um, okay. Can you guys hear me now? Uh, yeah. You might want to turn the live feed off. Yeah. We have your next slide up, though. Okay, great. Um, sorry, I can hear my echo and uh, and what I said a few seconds ago. I don't know if you guys are listening to me right now or. Listen to me. Are can you guys using? Oh, okay, hear me. Okay, great. So uh, a little background. I don't know if you guys heard that part. Um, um, I have a bachelor's uh, from Columbia College in marketing and uh, business administration, and now degree from Harvard University in extension studies and sustainability and environmental management. Um, and I work in uh, 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 for the DLD and volunteer for the Department of Defense in Northeast Africa and the Middle East. And been volunteering uh, uh, with our military personnel for over 10 years. Uh, currently, I'm a senior manager at uh, Timor US, and I work with Deutsche Telekom in Europe, uh, back and forth, and climate change and sustainability uh, uh, initiatives. Uh, and Deutsche Telekom is our parent company. Um, so um, let me rewind how I started doing this, uh, working on my research and in, in, in an upcoming book. Uh, uh, hopefully, it's going to be published soon. But uh, um, so, um, if we can go to the, the climate change impact uh, on health slide, that'll be great. Oh, please. Uh, okay. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, you might want to turn the light feed on. Um, yeah. All right. So, um, on climate change impact on health. So, back in 2004. Back in 2004, I was um, uh, in um, Northeast Africa in a little country called Djibouti. And uh, um, so what happened was I experienced by first hand uh, the detrimental effects of uh, environmental degradation and, 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 and climate impacts. Um, so, um, so uh, what happened was um, uh, just uh, talking to the local residents, um, I saw uh, the effects of climate change on health, and that really grabbed my attention. Um, so what happened was um, uh, just talking to the locals, I see that climate can affect health and uh, definitely can be very detrimental for their well-being. And that kind of like triggered my curiosity searching the, um, the connection, the correlation between health and climate change. Um, so that was very, very staggering for me. Uh, and then researching even further, um, I mean, for example, on the slide that shows, you know, over 300,000 people are dead, 325 million people certainly uh, affected by climate change impacts, uh, over 500 million people are at risk. So uh, the numbers are, are really, as I said, staggering. And, and and give us an idea of what climate can do to our well-being. Um, saying that, um, now joining Harvard University and, and working on my master's degree, I did interview uh, many, many doctors, uh, Dr. George Luber from the CDC, uh, uh, Dr. Andy Haynes in London, uh, and many experts on the field of climate change and health. Uh, and I found out that there's a connection, or well, the connection, I should say, uh, between health and climate is so big that can actually trigger or, or 
events or lead to a sense of urgency for this problem. So um, saying all that and not being a doctor myself uh, and reading what hundreds, thousands of, of, of pages of uh, the IPCC report on climate change, vulnerabilities on, on, on populations, health risks, uh, the World Health Organization came out with several papers uh, about also climate change impacts on health as well as the UN. Um, I realized that if we put health issues uh, on, the, on, the, on the front page of the climate talks can create a sense of urgency uh, uh, for, 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 for this particular topic. Um, so um, I started researching in four different cities. Uh, so Rio de Janeiro is the first one, and then I moved to New York, LA, and then I did research on uh, in Beijing, about Beijing and China, right? So um, so all these materials gave me the, 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 the scope and the, the idea of uh, the, the magnitude of the problem. Um, if we can move to the next uh, slide, please. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, so now, there are one part, right? So, um, so what I was, uh, actually I did interview for this particular research, the mayor of Rio de Janeiro, Eduardo Pai, which now is the chairman of the C40 Network of Cities, uh, formerly was uh, named by Michael Bloomberg, and his advisor, Rodrigo Rosa. And uh, um, I talked to uh, many city leaders in New York, LA, uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina as well. And um, um, so uh, what, what I found out was that the urban poor are much more vulnerable than the rest of the population. For very obvious reasons, you know, uh, um, they don't have access to the healthcare system as uh, we do, for example, in a developed country. Um, uh, the air quality in Beijing is a big problem, we all know that. Uh, food availability, uh, water quality, access to water, to, to, to drink water is a problem as well for the urban um, And there's a few other reasons, like I said. Um, first of all, uh, the urban power of the, this particular segment of society uh, moved to the city to look for one. For, uh, uh, to improve their economic well-being, right? To look for jobs, uh, to look for a, a better housing uh, uh, um, state. So uh, what happened is they don't have the, the means, they don't have the money, just uh, uh, plain and simple. They don't, they don't have the economic resources, uh, uh, and, and they settle in landscape and landfill that are not accommodated for commercial use, uh, and that leads to what? Uh, impacts. Uh, climate impacts and, uh, uh, to their uh, um, home habitat and, uh, and definitely they're much more vulnerable uh, to those effects of uh, flooding, heavy rains, uh, heat wave, air conditioning, etc. Et so, um, um, and also uh, uh, global warming or uh, the high rise of temperatures uh, lead to uh, um, uh, uh, water warm, uh, 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 diseases. Uh, 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 vector diseases, uh, and that creates also another problem, particularly in developing countries, uh, in the African continent, for example, with malaria and, and, and South America, the Shara disease. Um, so, um, saying all that, um, so the urban poor moved to the big cities, uh, and, and in this case, uh, I'm talking about mega cities, you know, the, the 10 million residents. Of, uh, or more uh, to look for opportunities, and they settle these precarious settlements and, 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 and slum shacks, etc. Right? So, when a climate event, a severe weather event, uh, happens, um, uh, they are so vulnerable that it affects their health, and consequently, the mega city itself doesn't have the resources, the budget sometimes. To, uh, um, to take care of these people. There's too many people living around these uh, downtown centers um, in these precarious conditions. Um, so that uh, uh, put a lot of stress on the health crisis as well. Uh, we can move to the mega city, the next slide, please. The mega city slide. So now, uh, going back to the mega cities, uh, um, just a little know about that. Uh, so mega cities are definitely uh, an engine uh, for growth. 
um, job opportunities, economic uh, trade is big. Uh, some of his magazines are really uh, a big contributor of uh, GDP for some countries. So, uh, so uh, and I live in LA, and, and most of my life I live in LA. So LA, the LA, Sunshine Port, this is huge for trade. So uh, they um, encompass uh, 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 wealth, uh, uh, just put it that way, and, and, and once again give opportunities. And developing countries, they do that. However, the princes of the urban poor, or the people that uh, uh, have no uh, 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 resources uh, um, to, to, to continue uh, or to be very, very well off economically are, are detrimental. Um, so what happens is megacities are a place for opportunities, but at the same time uh, build up this uh, sub society of residents who are definitely, definitely uh, vulnerable, and it creates inequality in society as well. Uh, 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 moreover, uh, with uh, climate change in the long term, and climate variability and severe weather events, <coughs> they are being affected the most. Um, so we can move to the next uh, uh, slide. Now we are talking about um, um, adaptation, right? So by nature, we adapt. Uh, that's one of our survival tools, right, as humans. So we adapt to almost, I can say, any conditions, right, any situations. Um, so adaptation is a big player uh, in the climate change talks. And I have a few talks with uh, Dr. Coco Warner at the UN and in Germany, born in Germany. Uh, uh, a few meetings with some uh, World Bank and, and UN leaders about adaptation, disaster management, so that's huge. And uh, the UN really focuses on, on the urban poor, so the most vulnerable uh, uh, segment of society. Um, um, I really have to say that uh, after uh, Hurricane Katrina and Sandy, uh, um, we know that things, bad things can happen in developed countries, right? Um, so uh, it, it, it's uh, the economic losses, the loss of life, etc. Um, so that gives us, and um, that give us a sign uh, of uh, uh, that we are not very well prepared. Um, talking to some uh, New York leaders at the climate change task force, um, now they came out with a very uh, substantial, concrete uh, uh, plan deal with this type of uh, severe, severe weather events. <coughs> so, but however, at the time, um, uh, with all due respect to every single leader in major city, they, they, they are not prepared. And, uh, and they don't have a systematic structure, uh, system in place to deal, to cope with climate change. Um, but, um, so adapt adaptation, uh, as the UN phrase it, is the action is taken to help communities and ecosystem to, to cope with Changing climate. Um, uh, so, adaptation um, is so important that um, for every dollar, so for every dollar that, that, that we are spending in preparedness, we save $7 in, um, uh, in response. Uh, so, uh, the economic impact is, uh, is also very, very, uh, very important. Um, um, so, we can move to the next uh, slide now. And just to let you know, you're out of time, so you should be finishing up. Wrap it up? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So, uh, risk management. So, uh, risk management is so important uh, um, that uh, every single entity, every single organization that is serious about business, I'm jumping into business now, but I'll be brief about this, um, it have a risk management approach and strategy. So through all my research, calling, meeting people in the last uh, four years, I noticed that they don't have a strategy that amalgamates all the climate change issues that they face in these mega cities. They all do work in silence. I, I think you muted yourself. Say that again? 
Uh, we couldn't hear you for a few minutes there. Oh, okay. Um, so, um, so what I was saying is, uh, um, um, so these cities, like many other organizations, work in silos. So what risk management does is give you a comprehensive, systematic structure, structure, excuse me, a timely way of dealing with risk management. And risk management, in this case, when you have a structure framework, uh, uh, in that, um, it works. recommended to the city leaders a business continuity management system plan so but uh, those are frameworks they are universal frameworks that can be used uh, uh, for this purpose why because when you follow certain steps by right, the plan do check act cycle when you follow those you have a structure you have a, 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 a set of guidelines that can actually lead to efficiency in your operations, as simple as that. They don't use that. So you, once again, they work in silence and they have their own ideas. Um, so we can move to the final thoughts, I guess. <laughs> um, so what, um, what I was saying is uh, um, that a systematic structure and timely uh, uh, framework, uh, not only to get ready for this impact, but also to uh, develop a business continuity management system plan is crucial for any city in the world to cope with climate change. Um, not only for the urban poor, but in developed country for all of us as well. Um, so, uh, so what it does pretty much is 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 uh, it's a standard-based solution uh, model that uh, uh, for carrying out change. So, um, so the beauty of all this is that it provides a starting point for all these cities. Um, something that can be a universal framework that they can use. And some grab uh, 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 attention into this and I try to understand what I wrote about and hopefully develop, develop it. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, um, thank you so much for the, um, for the opportunity to share all these ideas and, and thoughts. Thank you. Um, all right, and you should be able to see us now. Uh, so we're going to do a few minutes of Q&A, uh, and I'll, if you're not hearing the questions, I'll repeat them. Uh, but do we have questions from the room? Lois, go ahead. Uh, well, you know, it, what does success look like to you? You know, if you were to say in two years, you know, we will have been successful if this happens. What is that? Sure. Um, success will translate into um, a common denominator strategy, um, a plan that actually is being carbon copied by every single major city around the world to achieve operational efficiency and cope with this type of issues. Uh, that will be a success story, simply because right now um, each and every city leader are doing their own time, um, but there's no framework and a structure uh, that can actually be implemented in accordance to this type of uh, climate change uh, impacts on the population. So um, for me to achieve uh, uh, success will be uh, for them to, uh, um, uh, to have a systematic structure uh, to, to, to deal with these types of issues. So I'm going to ask a question as the moderator. Uh, what do you think, which city is uh, the best example out there of what you're talking about? Who's doing it best? Who? Oh, that's a challenge question, <laughs> but um, um, I think uh, from my own personal experience, uh, really, Janine. Uh, first of all, the challenges are huge, a 
huge urban population, uh, uh, drug problems, poverty to high levels, um, instability, um, uh, the favelas, very, very, very famous around the world for all the wrong reasons. Um, but, uh, uh, so, so many challenges. But Eduardo Paez is considering, actually he did implement ISO 39000 as a standard, uh, which, is, by the way, is a solution for the absence of a strategy. Uh, so uh, this particular strategy we amalgamate always associated with climate change. Um, so Eduardo Paez is actually, uh, um, I'm not saying he's successful doing it, but at least he, he took a few steps forward uh, in regards of other leaders in, in, in trying to implement a consistent uh, strategy in his uh, city, um, considering all the challenges that he's facing. All right, and we have time for just one more question. Uh, anyone have a question or? I can add something else. Just uh, Elizabeth, you were raising your hand. I'm just interested, how does he find his clients? Say that again? Your clients. My clients? I can't understand. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry, there's a little bit of confusion uh, on the project. Uh, but I guess, do you have a minute, and I literally mean just about a minute, uh, concluding remarks and... Sure. Sure. Um, uh, uh, one thing that we have to highlight, that politicians have a short term or time frame uh, to, to, to use their powers and, and, and to act upon any type of issues. And mega cities are facing so many issues, you know, uh, uh, but um, so what happened with the risk management approach, in particular with the ISO 31000 standard and the business continuity plan, is that lay out a framework, an established framework for all these cities to follow after the mayor leaves office. So that's a big plus right there. You know, they have a foundation, a base to start with. This is not a panacea. This is not the solution for all their problems and regards of climate change. Um, but after thousands of, you know, of pages from the IPCC report and the scientists saying this and, and sustainability and climate change leaders saying that, no one gets it. They're not getting along, pretty much. They don't really agree on, on, on two or three things at least. That's why, you know, the next and party hopefully will lead to something more concrete. But they keep having all these meetings. And I met many people from the IPCC, the IPCC uh, 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 um, uh, as well. And so the beauty of all this is just to, uh, just to amalgamate all these issues into one framework that can lead to continuous improvement. So much. Let's give everybody a round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you for dialing in, and uh, that concludes the first session of the Innovation Symposium. We will be back tomorrow, uh, so please tune in for the political track tomorrow, and Monday we're covering technology. Uh, and uh, for those of you in the room, we're heading to Picnic in the Yard next, so please join us for that, and uh, that's it for today, folks. Thank you.